My name is Manish Patel. I've been with Science Olympiads since uh, my younger kid was in uh, fourth grade. Uh, somehow, John Hopkins spotted me and said, uh, you are it. You're not going anywhere. So I have a kid in high school now, and uh, I'm doing this. And I'll tell you, by far, I enjoy this the most. Uh, no doubt in it. Me and my kids go out in summer and launch rockets. My kids, I have two, two girls, and we love it. So let's go ahead and start. If you guys have any questions, I'm sure you'll see me somewhere on the Macomb Vassal website. Uh, and you can ask the questions on, uh, on the facts if you have questions about this event. What are we going to discuss today? We're going to review the 2016 water bottle rocket rules. We are going to look at the basics, the fundamentals of water bottle rocket, and part of the fundamentals is to pick up some uh, building clips. What is my goal? My goal is in, in two years, I want every single rocket, 95% or more of the rocket that we let launch a tournament, will open. The parachute will deploy rather than going sideways and hitting the ground or going straight up and straight down. My goal is in two years, you guys all should be able to do this. And we are going to go all out to support you uh, to the best we can. All right, so I'm going to have a few minutes and I want kids to uh, help me. What do you think? Uh, if it looks good, it will certainly fly. And I got an example of the rocket there. What do you think? No? How about that rocket? Would, would it fly? No. Why? Huh? There is more to it than that, but good thinking. So, no, it's not going to work, right? Why? The flight requires understanding of forces. And what are the forces? Drag, stability, and not to mention building the rocket right side up. This rocket is upside down. You can't even put it on a launcher and launch, right? Myth number two, parachutes with hole in the middle is the best design. You see this picture? This is army using the parachutes. And if you can see in the middle, they all have holes. What do you think? Yes. Yes, no? Thumbs up? No. For us, that's not going to work. What is it going to do? The hole in parachute. What does the parachute do? It causes the drag, resistance. And we want that, right? Once you put a hole in it, it's going to let the air out. Can somebody tell me why they would, why they would have the hole in the parachute? Why would it work for them? Yes. That's partially correct. Because you want it quickly to go down. Exactly. They want it quickly to go down. They don't want it to float away. They want, as soon as it comes out, if there is a wind and the parachute does not have a hole, it potentially would float away in the wind. So they put a hole in it so that there is a control and it will land directly rather than fly all over the place. And these are the things, when you guys do things, parents, if you work with kids, these are the things, these are the building blocks that will get these kids so far away. Myth number three, a rocket that is strong enough to be held is strong enough for flight. That's not true. That's not true, that's correct. Why is that true? 
A rocket experiences up to 30 to 40 Gs, meaning a 30 gram parachute is going to feel like two to three pounds. That's how much force is in the parachute or it is in the rocket when it's going up, right? And most of you probably have rode this fancy uh, roller coasters. They only go up to three Gs. So now you know how many more Gs are there. How many Gs do you think is in the rocket when we send people to uh, space? Anybody know? Or anybody know how many Gs a human body can survive? No. No, less than seven. So, a lot of pressure there. Myth number four, 50% air water mixture is the perfect formula for maximum height. Yes? No. No? Anybody else? No. No? What is the, what is the right formula? Anybody can tell me what is the right formula? You have to figure it out, but it's less than 50. Everybody has a different, depending on how your rocket is built, everybody has a different ratio, but it is definitely less than 50. As you try it on the same rocket, right, you have to, you have to tell the kids and let them observe it and tell them what works the best for you. So when you, when you show the kids the rocket, right, somebody had this question, how do we know how much water? Well, you can have a measuring cup. We are going to provide you some, but it may not be the same type as what you may have used, right? So my best advice is you bring in your measuring cup with your rockets. Tell the kids how much water, either by measuring cup or by putting marker mark on the pressure vessel. As you can see, there is a mark here. And there is a lot of confusion. I see this every day at the tournament, right? Because you're going to fill it up like this, you're going to put a cap on it, and you're going to go out to the station. And the kids are like, oh, water's not correct. Right? So walk through this. If you only launch it once or twice, kids are not going to learn so you're going to have to do it more, and you're going to have to talk to them. So make sure you guys either mark, or you guys use your own measuring cup and bring it in. My rocket will be most stable and fly higher if I have fins placed all over the rocket. No, I see the no. How about there? No? That's correct, it has a drag. What's the purpose of fins? Up in the air. So it helps it glide proper, right? It's more like a steering to the rocket. Where should the fins be? On the side of the rocket so it could glide better. The fins should be below the center of gravity. Right? How are you going to figure out the center of gravity? Very simple. One technique is to try to hold the rocket on your finger and see where it balances. That's your center. So things should be far below the center of gravity. And it's not going to be easy to do because you're going to have to, whatever nose cone or whatever device you use that has to be on rocket to figure it out. So what you could be doing, maybe you can use a string to figure it out. Fins must be strong enough to withstand 80 miles per hour wind, right? I have a plastic material here that I had used previously. It's a cheap cutting board, right? I don't know. What do you guys think? This will work? No. 
So you guys, you guys need to pay attention to that. And like I said earlier, fin should be below center of gravity. All right, so we are going to talk about the forces. What forces does a rocket encounter during the flight? There are three main forces, gravity, drag, and propulsion. Acceleration phase of ascent, right? So meaning when the rocket is going up. How long is it? How long is the acceleration? It's extremely short duration. So meaning the amount of time the pressure is applied to the rocket. How many seconds you guys think when you launch a rocket? that the pressure is being applied to the rocket, meaning it's really being pushed by the force. Anybody, even parents can jump in on this question. It's three seconds or less. Rest of it is just glide, right? So that's all you're getting, three seconds of push, and the rest is all glide. Thirst comes from the 75 PSI plus water combination, right? Gravity, constant force that pulls the rocket to the ground, meaning when you are launching it, that is the force that's slowing you down and eventually pulling it back down to earth. The force of gravity is proportional to rocket's mass. Drag. I think somebody helped me out a couple minutes ago that that will be drag. That's a very good observation. Drag is a, is a very big factor. If the rocket is not made right, if the fins are flappy, guess what? It's going to cause drag. When it causes drag, you are going to lose the force, the propulsion that's sending it up. So anything that's causing drag while it's going up, it is not good. While it's coming down, you want to increase the drag as much as you can so that it slows it down, the descent is slow. Five critical factors for the rocket. Reliability. All parts of the rocket must perform consistently and repeatedly. So you guys have to watch it more than a couple times and, and get to the right combination. What good is a parachute if it only deploys 50% of the time? If it only deploys 50% of the time, don't say, well, it, it just happens. There is science behind it. Observe it, take some videos, and let the kids figure it out. A reliable rocket is the result of Thorough testing. If you're not going to launch it more than 20 times, in my view, you're not going to have a good, good outcome. Rigidness. Flimsy parts are not able to withstand the 80 miles per hour wind. You should be able to pick up any part of your rocket and be able to shake it without it breaking. What happens if one of the pieces breaks while the rocket's going up? Well, not only they will stop the clock when the first piece hits the ground, but you will automatically be putting the second tier, right? So somebody whose rocket only went up, stayed up for five seconds and stayed intact, and your rocket stayed up for 15 seconds, but a piece came off, they will be scored higher than you. Not a single piece from the rocket should come apart. Whatever goes up has to come back in one contiguous piece. It can check and separate, but not fall apart, right? Decision, no room for sloppiness. If the rocket is not made right, then the top tube is not centered, right? 
it's not going to work. If the rocket can't stay like this on its uh, on its opening, more than probably your balance is not and it's not going to work. That's called sloppiness. Size and placements of the fins are critical. There are simulators out there. I like the one by NASA. You can research it and look at it. It's going to give you a lot of ideas. And more than anything, you're going to teach these kids how to use these tools rather than just tape something together and try to launch it. Record the data. Which rocket, how it was made, where the fins were, and how many seconds you are getting with how much water, right? I mean, it's a complex thing, but this is where they are going to learn a lot. Weight. The proper weight will help a rocket achieve a decent height. Stability is more important than weight. Weight affects how quickly a rocket descends. A reduction of 3 grams affects time of float by one second. I forgot to bring my, uh, my little scale, but I'm sure a lot of you have a little kitchen scale. How many of you have ever figured out between different models which model may weigh one gram less than the other? Nobody, right? And that's science. So get the kids into it. I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference, but for kids to observe that and put it in use goes a long way. I can tell you there is one model that consistently weighs gram and a half less than the other models. Drag. Low drag means higher flight and longer time afloat. Not as critical as weight affects the first four seconds of the flight. Weight affects the, the remaining flight time. Flight stages. I put this, and this is, this is my interpretation uh, of the flight stages. So you may prove me wrong scientifically, but this is, this is how I analyze the flight stages. And I got a picture, not a very good picture as you can tell, but I tried to capture it in certain second intervals, so it's a little bit fuzzy. Uh, at this point, as you can see, the white part is where the rocket would normally be parked. So how much it's gone up. This is traveling between 5 to 10 miles per hour. We have hardly lost any fuel, which is the water and the air pressure, and this is at about 0 0.09 seconds at 40 PSI. Launch. Newton's law in progress. Acceleration now up to 90 miles per hour possible. 0.25 seconds into the flight, and drag is higher. Air pulse. 0.3 seconds into the flight, the water has been pushed out. As you can see by the arrow, the water is coming out in pulse mixed with the air. Remaining air is going to quickly exit through the nozzle. And at this point, you're pretty much not going to add any more acceleration. It's just going to float out. Glide. Continue straddling upward until approach is where Apogee is rich, where speed is how much? Zero. Zero. It's pretty much like no gravity, right? It's just floating up there and trying to, gravity is trying to pull it back. Here is where your attention to detail pays off. At this point, somebody had asked a question how to launch the parachute. This is the point that's going to launch the parachute. And your design is going to matter. If you can figure this out, you pretty much got it done. This would be the highest point of travel. It pretty much, at, at that stage, there is no weight. Uh, rocket begins to reorient itself 
based on the center of gravity. I can tell you this is this sentence, if you can figure it out, is is very critical. This sentence is answered to a lot of things. Parachute should deploy here. This is the point where parachute is going to come out. Descent. Gravity is going to pull the rocket back to Earth. It descends lower than it ascended. Why? Because of the drag. Parachute causes drag, and if deployed correctly, it should give you a nice and slow descent. I have some water bottle or water rocket resources, some websites that you guys can go to. Uh, the one on the bottom, that's my favorite. Uh, there is lots of variations of it. I'll post that so you will have it. Uh, all these links will be on the website. Uh, there are some launcher designs and considerations in here. Uh, I hear a lot of people get frustrated because they can launch. Uh, I was talking earlier, uh, most of you were not here. This year we are going to try and have an open launch where we'll send you an email probably a week before. Now weather is the main factor. I could possibly send an email out two weeks before, but the reason is I want to be sure of the weather, that everybody is going to be able to enjoy it and I'm not going to have ice on my launcher. So as the time progress, we are going to try to do it at least once. Hopefully we can do it twice. Where we'll send you an email that I'm going to be here or somebody is going to be here with the launcher. Uh, we'll let you come in. We'll probably put a limit on the launches. We'll say, you know, two launch to begin with. And if nobody's there and if we have enough time, we'll let you launch possibly more. But we'll, we'll, we'll decide, depending on how many people are there, that two to four launches, and then we got to give other people a chance, right? These are the launchers. Uh, back in the day when I was launching it, that was the only option, and it was, it was pretty painful. Uh, it was made with the electrical box, and it's still sitting in my attic. Uh, T50 was the the inflator valve that we used uh, to lock into the lock. Uh, there are some on the internet that you can make with the PVC pipe. I think it's fairly easy to do. And then this side, uh, these are the commercial ones. I want to say they are around 30 to 40 dollar range. Uh, most of these require either a mini air compressor or that's all I have. If you guys have any questions, uh, I'm open. If you guys have rockets that you want to, if nobody has questions, if you guys have rockets, then we can go to those and look at them. Uh, I really want you guys to ask a lot of questions, and if you don't ask questions, at least I want you guys to start thinking about the rockets, building them, uh, and launching them. I've launched rockets even when it's been 30 degrees where water would ice up on the launcher. Yes? The day of the competition, the launcher is already there. We don't bring our own correct? No, you do not need to bring launchers. The, whole, the day of the competition, the only thing you need to bring is your rocket, your parachute, if you want to bring a toolkit to, for, let's say, for whatever reason, worst case scenario, the rocket's, rocket's not right, and we ask you to rebuild, right? So kids should have all the supplies to rebuild the rocket. You may just come with one rocket and it got lost, and you may have to rebuild the rocket there. I understand when you are doing it at home, you can build, you can help build the rockets. When you are at the competition, parents are not allowed to be with the kids. Not to fill the water, not to help guide, right? Uh, Steve Rossi will be there 
And I can assure you, he's the nicest guy. But once you don't follow the instructions, he will have zero problems throwing you out. Zero problems. And I've seen him every year. Parents would argue with him, and he would say, leave. So this is about kids, kids launching it, and respect that. Yes, one second. You had a question, Mark? So what kind of launcher is going to be there that day? Uh, launcher is like a kitchen cabinet. Uh, and it has something like this mounted to it, right? Wool pressurize it. You won't have to worry about anything. We'll lock the nozzle in for you. We'll put it on the stand. And then before we pressurize, we'll generally tell the kids, are you okay with it? At this point, they can go and adjust it. Let's say, you know, rocket is not right, right? It's crooked, right? Bing has tipped the. You know, cones like this. Kids are not paying attention. We'll ask them. Hey, do you, do you need to do anything? So they all have a chance to go and fix it. And a lot of times, I mean, this little angle like this is going to make a lot of difference, right? So teach your kids. You're going to have at least two out there, maybe three. Tell them. You got to look at it from a couple angles. And how private. Once it's straight and we pressurize it, there will be a plexiglass. Kids will be asked to stay on this side of the plexiglass. They will not be allowed to go in the front. If something happens, they will tell us, we'll fix the cone. A parachute fell out, we'll get involved, we'll fix it. Once it's pressurized, we'll not let the kids touch it. And that's only because of safety reasons. We don't want this to launch and they break their hand, right? I mean, 70 PSI is a lot of pressure. Your bicycle tire you know, it, is at how much PSI? 40. 40. Your car tires are at 30, 32, right? So imagine there's a lot of pressure. We don't want the kids to get hurt. That's the reason we will tell them that they gotta stay away from. Yes. Are the coupling with the rocket completely done? Like the parachute is inside and the nose cone is already built on top of it? So, no. When they come in, they will have their rockets checked before they put the water. Right? So, the event supervisor will ask them to see the rocket, the parachute. Right? He, once he checks it, then you are okay. Then you fold the parachute, put it in. Uh, put your cone on, or first put, you're going to put the water on, and then you're going to take this to the launching site, right? Once you go there, we'll put the no nozzle in, we'll lock it on the stand, and then we'll ask you, are you okay to launch? At that point, we'll pressurize using one of the keys on here, and then there's a key that will ask the kids to launch. Also very important, to tell the kids, figure it out, right? Who's going to launch? Who's going to carry the rocket? A lot of times, I see kids fighting. And before the timers are ready to time, we have, generally speaking, we have three timers there. They are so excited, they'll just hit it. And guess what? It's gone. We're not counting it. Because you launched it without us being ready, right? So very important to work with kids on who is going to do what task? So are, are they actually putting the bottle by themselves? Or? No, they will just bring the bottle to us. We will put the bottle. Yes? After kids fill the rocket with water, are they supposed to like tap that down and bring the rocket there? Or are they, they just turn it upside down? And that, is, that is completely up to them. If they are comfortable with the cap, then tell them to put the cap on. We'll take the cap off and we'll put it on. If they are comfortable just bringing it up to us, right? Uh, without the cap. Uh, because once they feel, this is how they're going to feel the water, right? Parachute's already in. Uh, they're going to hold it in the position. They're going to fill it. 
And as long as they are comfortable walking with it, and it's, it's a good walk. It's not a 10, 20 feet walk. It's a good walk. As long as they are comfortable, because the water is pretty low, there is no way it's going to spill out. Right? So as long as they are comfortable, let them walk. And when they come to the station, we'll take over. We'll take the rocket from them, and we'll put it on, and then we'll mount it on the launch. Yes? So will we have a partner to help us? You should have two people on your team, right? Or you only have one person. You, you generally should have two people on your team. Uh, this, this event allows up to three people, right? So if you have an extra hand and you want to bring it in, this is the event to do it. All other events have restrictions that you can, a lot of other signs are on their events, that you can only bring in two people. Yes? Are you allowed to use multiple parachutes? That's totally up to you, meaning on, on a single rocket? That's completely up to you. That, there is no restriction on how many parachutes you can have. If you can build a glider, right? Uh, I mean, you don't need parachutes. If you, if you can build proper wings that you think it will go up and then just fly down, you don't need a parachute. Parachute is not, not a must, but everybody uses it. Yes, back there. Is there a limit on how much water you can put in? There is no limit on how much water you can put in, but if you put more than 45%, you are slowing yourself down. Because what happens when you put in a lot of water? What happens? The force has to carry that much more water up. So you are wasting the energy you have in carrying the higher amount of water. Also, when you put extra water, there is only so much room inside this bowl. So the air that's going to go in is going to be less than water being less, than air is going to be more. So you're going to get more pressure out of it. So anything over 50, I'll strictly suggest that you are not on the right path. Yes? Pressure vessel, right? So this is the main model that cannot be modified in any way. In any way. Meaning you cannot cut it, you cannot extend it, it has to be a two-liter bottle. Right? You cannot try to tap on another bottle because more than probably you will have a leak. Once we put the pressure at about 65 psi. You are on the yes. <coughs> the official pressure that you're going to pressurize them to, uh, what is that number? I, I just picked this up because I did not verify that. I was going to say originally at the beginning of this, I heard 100. And then no, no. We never go about 75. For safety reasons, we never go about 75. Even though these bottles, I believe, are rated at 110 PSI, okay. we, as a tournament, have never gone about 75. I would say 65 to 70 is what you should expect. Okay. And whatever we set it up as, right? I mean, we are not going to go below 50, but that's what stays on all day long. It's not going to change by one track. Also, the location of the launchers. In seven to eight years that I've been involved with, once it's decided in the morning by the supervisor that this is where the launcher A is going to be, this is where it's going to be, and the wind can shift, something else can happen, it will stay here. It will not, it will not move. And same thing with the launcher B that's going to be somewhere else. It's going to stay in the same spot. Yes? Can you make some suggestions about um, folding or packing the parachute? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. You go, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to try and come up with some techniques. 
Uh, Google, Google, and you will see a bunch of stuff. Uh, when I started, this was uh, eight, eight years ago, I think. Uh, I Googled, I researched. Uh, one of the previous coaches gave me some ideas, and I never took less than, I never took first part, but I never took below third. So, very simple, just put your mind to it, let the kids think, let the kids research, and you'll have it. Yes? pressurizing the armor, right? So, what's the length of the filler tube, which is inside? How far it keeps it? So, another thing I wanted to do, which I did not do, and I'm going to do that quickly. Read the rules, read the rules, and read the rules, and read the rules, right? If you don't, you're going to come up with designs or something, and you're going to have problems. So some of the things that I have highlighted that I think are important, uh, it should be, it must be a new rocket. You could have a good rocket from last year, or two years ago, or five years ago. Do not use that. We will know, and we don't want the kids to be disqualified. So it has to be new rocket, right? The bottom, the bottom piece, the pressure vessel, has to be a two liter soda bottle. The nozzle cannot be modified in any way, right? Some people try to file it, some people try to make the passage narrow, cannot, because it would not go on our launcher and you would disappoint kids because we will not launch it, right? Very important, the two liter pressure vessel, where the water is going to go in, and it's going to get pressurized by us, cannot be modified in any way. It cannot scratch the outside surface with sandpaper. Because once we see that, the integrity of the vessel has been jeopardized, and we would not let the kids launch it because of safety reasons, right? Do not modify the two liter bottle, the main vessel, in any way. The height of the fully assembled, ready to launch rocket cannot be less than 28 inches. I know there's been a couple questions asked on it, and then number five is very explicit. Minimum height has to be 28 inches. If you are doubtful, go in higher. You know, if, if this is going to be put in a little harder by kid, if you have it exactly at 28, and if it's half inches less, it's not going to go through. There's also restrictions on the nose as to two liter soda bottle cap has to be put on it, and that it should touch. It should touch the very top of it. So if you make this very pointed, and the cap is not going to sit on it without the top touching the top of this, right? That's not going to work. If you make a make it as sharp as possible, right? very triangular like this, where if I put my cap on it and it touches, that is not valid. So you. You will get rejected. Uh, no exception from those rules. Fins and other parts to the bottom must be five centimeters or higher above the nose. Somebody had just asked that question, and the reason for that is I was not asking the fin. I'm asking actually the tube that is going in, where the air is going to be pressurizing it, not the fin. There is no tube. 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 There is I don't have a ruler to measure it, but you are welcome to come take a look. Okay. It's it's less than an inch if I if I estimate it. Right? Thanks. Energy
energy to propel the rocket must come exclusively from water and pressurized air, meaning you cannot put some sort of a chemical in the bottle that may be visible or invisible, we will know, and that is not allowed. The school name and team must be clearly marked on all rockets, meaning your school name has to be written somewhere with a crazy marker or whatever you use, it must be visible. Safety goggles are lost. If you don't have safety goggles, more than probably, they will not let your kids launch it. They will ask them to step away, and who is the station supervisor is going to launch it. And I can tell you, it's not a big deal to some of you, but when I see those kids' faces, it is a big deal. So get the safety goggles. I believe we bought some, and we are going to sell them for five bucks. Uh, and those are kid size because a lot of parents complained last couple of years that kid size safety goggles were hard to find. So we bought them and we'll have them at the, at the various district tournaments. Any other questions? Yes? It can be anything. The only restriction is the main bottle, two liter bottle. That's the only restriction. From that point on, you can have whatever you want. Yes? Yes, the total height has to be 28 inches, but you can get that height by anything else. You can, you can roll this up, make a tube, right? And use them on top of the pressure vessel to extend your height to 28 inches, right? You can use anything you want. Any other questions? I haven't looked at this side lately. Any other parachute size? No, no limit on parachute size, but I'll tell you common sense will prevail. If the parachute is too big, it's going to add weight. It's going to take long, larger room for you to store it in here. And it's more than probably going to take larger time for it to unfurl and grab the air, right? If it's not going to grab the air and unfurl properly, guess what? You're wasting time. And once it tangles, three to five seconds, you're done. It's down. So try it. I mean, the best thing I can say is, Launch it. Make a big, make a, make a small, make a medium. You know, make somebody was asking uh, if I can use two. Try with two, see if it works, right? That's the best thing. Yes? Um, you mentioned that uh, kids are allowed to bring like repair kits for the market. Like, can you talk, can you uh, talk about like the idea, what, what your idea of a repair kit would be? Like, can so, they, like, can they, do they have to bring like a bottle and then they would have to like cut it, then, you know. In. So my kids, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but this is what I did with my kids, right? If this is my rocket, then my kids are going to launch, right? This is the feed material. They'll have that. This is the tape. They'll have that. They'll have a couple of this extensions. Now, if it's not cut, they're going to need something to cut. As an example, like using thin as an example, can they already have like a spare Yes. Yes. Pre -cut or are they it's to cut totally up to you. We do not dictate any of that. You can either send this and let them cut with it, right? I mean, are they going to get frustrated? More than probably, right? So use your best judgment. The, the narrower the scope, the easier you make for them. The best it is. Every single year, my kids have gone in with enough material to make another three to four rockets. And not a single year, they've used one piece. But 
after successive years, they still have gone in with a complete kit. Yes? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but this is like a cheap cutting board, I believe. Uh, like I said, fits. I'm not going to say what you use and what you don't use, but we talked about it, right? 70 to 80 miles per hour, if it's going to flap, it's going to cause drag. I have some other material up here that's a little bit sturdier, but you're going to have to come up with that. And again, I want to warn you guys, just because this is here, don't think this is the best design. This is just an example of a lot of people who have frustrations with it, right? They're not seeing one first year coaching. I don't want them to be lost. But I don't want you to just take a picture of it. You're free to take a picture of it. I don't want you to take a picture with picture of it and try to build the same thing. There are a lot better ideas out there than this. This is just an example. Yes? They don't lose any water. Nope. Uh, I've seen a couple of these, the, the top two, I believe. Uh, I want to say they are 35, 40 bucks. Works great. Uh, <clears throat> there is a good design of this PVC kind. This is the one where you have to put that wire in it to lock the thing, uh, top of the cap down so that it doesn't fly off. There's a couple other designs. If you do a search for water bottle rocket launcher using PVC, I think you will see it. It uses the zip ties and a coupling. So you will zip ties will hold the cap or the rim of the bottle down, and the coupling will slide up to hold it. And once you pull it down, it will launch the rocket. That, I think, is very simple to take it at home. Key thing is, I can tell you guys, I can sit here all day and look at your rockets or show you my rockets and all that. The key thing is, build your rockets and launch, launch, and launch. If you can't launch it, it's no fun. Yes? Weather on the day of the tournament, what if it's not good at vacation ground? So, this is first year that we have a weather policy. I think it's posted on the website, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's posted out there, and now we are going to follow that. I remember about seven years ago, uh, there was a day that it was so windy with snow coming down that we could not even launch the rocket. Normally, we launch it either in parking lot or by the soccer field. That we could not even launch in the parking lot. It was that windy, so we had to move the launcher on the back side or the side of the library building, which is three-story high. And we launched the rockets that day. So I have launched rockets when the water coming out has frozen up on the, on the launcher. I have launched, I have a launcher that's, that's something like this. It doesn't have a stand or nothing. That I, I had to spike it in the ground with a spike, but I couldn't even put the spike in the ground. The ground was that frozen and I have launched it. So, no excuses for not launching rockets, guys. <laughs> yes, in the back. How much? Height really doesn't matter. Your rocket can go 100 feet high and come straight down, and you will get 7 to 8 seconds, if that. And a rocket that would only go 40 feet high, the parachute would deploy, and it would take 20, 30 seconds to come down. So height really doesn't matter. I think the design and the stability is what matters. Any other questions? Can you explain like, what is a good time that's one of the best? And we know that our rocket launch is It's been all over the place. And so every year, the, the rocket changes the height, right? So last year it was a short rocket. I can't remember how much was it, but you really couldn't go more than a bottle. I mean, just a little bit about one bottle kind of thing. And last year there were some great times. I mean, I want to say a couple of rockets spent two minutes. Actually, one rocket went across the road uh, into some restaurant building. And 
I, I want to say they stopped it because it got close to the tree or the restaurant building and it still had another five to seven seconds. And then there are days where a rocket that has come down halfway through the building and a wind dust hits the building, the wind has nowhere to go but up and it has lifted the rocket up and thrown it away for a minute and a half. So, I mean, times are all over, but, yes? That data, that data is posted on our website if you look at the results from last yes. year. Yes, <coughs> all the data is on the website. That's a very good point, John. So, if you go to the website and look at the previous few years' data, you will know which school scored how much. And the data is posted both ways by whoever had the highest time as well as by each school. So if you had a, you know, if your school did so much last year and you want to follow the same design or ask that coach some questions, you can look up that data and figure out who the coach is and ask the questions. Yes? So you said you had two launches, right? So it's the, how do you decide who is going to win? Is it the combination of the two or is it one The best one? time wins. Like so of the two, your best time takes you long in the and that should be in the rules. Do I have to launch it? <laughs> no. If you are comfortable with just one launch, then you do one. But how do you know that somebody else has a better time or slower time? No. If I only have one rocket and just ran away. If I don't go for the second You don't launch. have a choice then. Right? If it ran away, your choice is to rebuild another. Kids have to build it, like I said again. Right? You cannot come in and help them. I, I see no reason why you would come with one rocket. Let me put it straight away. Any other questions? Yes? Um, can you provide any examples of acceptable food? Um, I have not used any glue, so I could not tell you, but I believe liquid nails is safe glue. If you put a look on the label, by law, they have to tell you what's that the ingredient in that group. So any part you pick up and look at it will tell you what it is. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you is one of my slides said three grams of weight, if you take off three grams of weight, it's about adds about a second, right? So if you're going to use, you know, some thick masking tape, that's going to add weight, right? I mean, are there other alternatives? <coughs> there definitely are. So again, I will tell you, this is here as an example. Just don't follow this as the law. This is just an average example. So don't go crazy taking pictures and doing the same things. I can tell you, you should research the shapes of the feeds too. Actually, the kids should do it. And then they will know why the fins are important and what works. But you can you can do it directly to the pressure vessel. Yes, you can. Yes, you must bring the glue, even though you are hundred percent sure that it doesn't contain crazy glue material in it. You must bring that glue with you, so the tournament director or event supervisor can look at it before they tell you to do it. Yes, John. I'm wondering if the, the rocket coach for Nobody Woods is here. Thank you. Yes. You're talking about crazy glue, and in here it talks about a particular chemical, the cyanobacterium yep. or whatever, how would we pronounce that? So is that specifically the chemical glue adhesive that's banned? So if, there's, if it doesn't have that, you can use it. Is that the idea? That's correct. That's correct. So if you look at the if you look at the glue you buy and if it contains that material, it will be on the label. And we will strongly ask that you don't use that. Again, I'm going to say this one more time. The reason for not using it is not for advantage or disadvantage. The main reason it is corrosive glue to plastic, meaning it's going to destabilize that pressure vessel. When we pressurize it, we don't want that to explode in, in kids' face or our faces, right? 
I understand what you're saying. You strongly discourage it, but it's not a discouragement. It's bad. It is bad. It is absolutely bad. You cannot use it. Yes, that is correct. As it states in 4D, you cannot use that group. What I was trying to say was, I strongly discourage using blue or the measure muscle. Most of the other districts would not let you use, or most of the other science Olympiads would not let you use glue on the pressure vessel because it is so hard for them to figure out who used what. You couldn't, I mean, you could bring in and, you know, it blows up there. We really don't want that. We don't want, you know, anything like that happening. So, again, my personal recommendation is, Try not to use glue on the pressure vessel. Make it easy for everyone. But if you think that's the only choice you have, then you must bring the glue with you. Yes? You can put as many fins as you want, but you, you should research it as to why you use the fins on a rocket and what would work best. You can make a rocket with four fins, and you can make a rocket with three fins, and see when you launch it, which one works better, right? Yes? You can use as many as you want. The main thing is the height of the rocket with the cone, right? So you're going to put it like this, put the cone on it, and have your egg or whatever you're going to put on the top on it, and then put the ruler next to it, it should be minimum of 28 inches. If it's less than that, you're not going to be able to launch it at the tournament. Or you're going to launch it as just practice shot, right? <coughs> you're not going to count. Yes? How long is it? I have not measured, and I think different models may be a little bit different. Uh, again, there are different shapes of bottle now, right? So this is the older style of bottle. I think all the Coca-Cola bottles have changed to this Sprite-like bottle. Can you hold it up so everybody can see? So that's a that's a different. Oh, Different exactly. shape, yeah, they, that's good too. <laughs> then, then this shape, right? And again, I said three grams pretty much adds a second. Have these kids made the bottle. You leave the label on, does it make difference? Is it going to flap, right? All those are critical pieces. Anybody else? Well, that's a very good question, but you're going to have, you're going to have to put it in practice and figure out which one's better. That's an awesome question, and I hear when I'm out there, I hear kids talk about it all the time that my bottle is better than than that bottle, and you have to figure that out. It's a very good question. Yes? Can you remove this plastic ring? Yes, you can remove the plastic ring, but you cannot remove the, the flange-like ring because we're going to need that, like this ring right here. I don't have the, I know which ring you are talking about, the ring that's part of the seal. Right. Yeah. Yep, you can remove that, but you cannot remove this hard plastic ring that's part of the bottle because we need that to lock on the launcher. Any other questions? Yes? There is no question is, is there a limit on how big the fins have to be? There is no limit on how big the fins have to be. But again, review this presentation. We are going to post it in a day or so. Uh, you don't want a lot of drag while the rocket is going off. If your fins are too big, 
And if you think that's going to cause the drag, you have to figure that out. If that's going to cause the drag, more than probably you don't want those things that day. But you're going to have to figure that out. Any other questions? How many of you guys are excited to build the rockets and launch it? Awesome. Awesome.